Hello, my name is Mark Humphrey and I'm a professional wildlife photographer. Today, I'm gonna to be using Adobe Lightroom for a low key edit of a beautiful gray seal pup photo that I took last winter. Let's get into it. So here we have this gorgeous gray seal pup and we've got its mum as a dark background in behind. And the whole thing I wanted to try and get with this photo was using its mum as a dark background to try and emphasize all of this white fur, but mostly the light that's coming through the whiskers here. First things first, I'm gonna give it a crop. And I've been really enjoying doing two, three crops whenever I've got a landscape photo. Don't ask me why, it's just personal preference. So I want it to be a, just a dark background at the top. So I'm gonna move it all the way up here so there's not any sort of bright area showing here. Now I've already come across an issue which is these whiskers of the mum are catching the light. So I'm gonna see if I can get a good enough composition without those whiskers. Hmm, it's not ideal. Maybe I'll pull this in a little bit. So it's quite close, but I'm really trying not to clone out any aspects of photos currently. And I think without having those whiskers in here, this is probably the best composition. Maybe down a bit, but that is pretty nice. Gorgeous. Right, and this was taken about half an hour after sunset, so I don't quite know what was going on with my white balance, but I'm gonna warm it up quite a lot, maybe to about there. You can see a before and after. That looks pretty good. Then I'm gonna do some global adjustments. Maybe make it as bright as I can without blowing out highlights. Just so I know what I've got to play with. I will probably wanna do some work on the contrast, but that will almost definitely come with masks later on. Highlights, I think we're fine at the moment. Shadows, I might lift slightly. Again, this is what we want to be. The seal pup and the whiskers especially is what I want to be the main aspect of the image. I think the background, I'm gonna be making a lot darker just so everything stands out. So that's the thought I've got in my head whilst I'm doing these global adjustments. The rest, I don't think I'm gonna do anything else. There's already quite a lot of color in this photo. I don't want it to make go mental. Looks good to me. Right, well let's see what we can do with the background. I'm already thinking there's gonna be some issues with these whiskers and the automatic masking, but we'll see. So, just gonna click on background. See what Lightroom's got for me. Not bad, not bad. Again, I don't quite want all of this sandy area to be masked at this point in time, but we can deal with that very easily. It's mostly these areas here and making sure that the sand and the whiskers aren't being affected. So something I learned from another YouTuber, I think it was Mark Dumbleton. I will link that video in my description if it is, that if you just create a background mask and then intersect it with another background mask, it will create a more precise background mask. No one really knows why, but we'll see. Okay, well, it's done a slightly better job. If anything, it might be slightly worse, but we can work with this. So what I wanna do is add in any of these dark areas. So for that, I'm gonna go to add, 
luminance range. Use the dropper to click on one of these. That will select what it thinks. It doesn't matter if any of the seal is currently masked because that's very easy to get rid of. But we're just going to refine the mask to the point where it is just the darkest areas that are selected. So you can see here, they're still not selected, so I'm just going to push this up. Again, it doesn't matter if the seal is selected, I'm just looking for these areas within the whiskers. It's not going to be perfect. But I can try subtract luminance range, click on one of these. It's doing a bit better. Refine it a bit further. Okay, so that looks about right. All I'm concentrating on is these areas here with the darker background around the whiskers. And as, as you can see, most of it now is not masked. So all I'm going to do, quickly go in, add brush. Just crudely paint in all of this, all of this. Then subtract brush and do exactly the same here. Right, so after what probably seemed like quite a lot of effort, we now have a mask that I'm hopefully pretty happy with. So all I'm gonna do to begin with is just darken that down and see what it looks like. I can already see it's a bit of an issue down here. So what if we just darken highlights, darken whites. Yeah, we'll still re reduce it quite a lot. And then what we can do is subtract with a little linear gradient and just do something like this and hopefully now that's a much more gradual so you can see it's a lot darker in the background but it's a very gradual effect here so all I did was add in a linear gradient is the final piece of the puzzle there. And then, so that's the linear gradient. If I press that, you should see that's the whole mask affected. Lovely. Right, so well, if we want to select everything else, then we can duplicate an invert mask. That just gives us the complete polar opposite mask. So we'll see how that's given us. Not bad. So now I want to subtract the background. That will do. Again, mostly what I want to be concentrating on is the highlights here. So even if it's a little bit messy on this mask, it's fine because I just want to be accentuating those highlights. Maybe add a little bit more warmth. A little bit of contrast. Getting there, now I just want to remove a little bit of what's catching the eye in the foreground. So I'm just going to do another little lin linear gradient. Bring that up to around there. Reduce the texture. Reduce the clarity. See it's quite dark here, so I think I might increase the shadows. So that's before. 
and that's after, so we're going all right. I might make it a little bit brighter. Okay, so we're getting there. I think what I might want to do is work a little bit more on the pup. Luckily, we've got that masked. We make that a little bit brighter. I think the highlights are probably too hot. I'm going to bring the blacks down just to keep the contrast in there. I think maybe a little bit more golden. So this is before, this is after, that's a big, big old change, you can see a lot of the emphasis is coming onto here. That's exactly what I wanted. Now, if I was to nitpick, maybe this area here and this area here is a little bit too bright. So all I'll do with that is take a little brush, make it nice and small, make the flow right down so that it just affects everything a lot less. Bring down the highlights a bit and just slowly brush over this. Again, if you want to have a look at what mask you're creating, you can pr press O, and there you go. You can see I'm just affecting these brighter areas. Then I'll go down here, I'll use, I'll make it a little bit smaller, just affecting these really bright areas with the, uh, removing the highlights, then to see how it is, I'll press O again. Then if you want to see the before and after, you can just use the I icon. So that's before and that's after. It's a subtle change, but I do think it brings more attention over here to the whiskers. And then there you go. I think that's probably about it. If I wanted to, I could maybe make this background a little bit darker, but it might end up being overkill. Maybe reduce the clarity in the background. Just merge the colours a bit more. That's before on the background. After, that's quite a drastic change. But I think that works. So yeah. I'll show you now, before, after. So I've taken a lot of the interest out of the background again. It's a bit messy, so I'll have to re remove certain aspects, but much darker background, much more golden on the beautiful pup and the lovely sand in front of it. Before, after, before after. Right, well I hope that that was useful for you guys. If you've got any questions whatsoever about my Adobe Lightroom editing process then feel free to drop me a comment and if you'd like to see more of these I'm going to try and do one of these every month so drop me a subscription and you'll be notified as and when those videos come out. But for now I'm going to say thank you very much for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.